Hey everybody, so today I'm here to discuss with you all some very exciting news. Um, definitely news that I was not expecting personally. So, in the recent Nintendo Partner Showcase, we were shown off Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. And some more intriguing news on that is that it'll be out, I believe, on March 23rd, almost a month after the Japanese re release of the game. So not only are we getting a brand new Story of Seasons game, but the localization turnaround for this game is just insane. For those of you who don't know, I believe the localization turnaround for Story of Seasons Friends of Mineral Town was about eight months. It was a little under a year, but it took a while for it to get here. So we will be getting this game very soon after when Japan gets it. And that right there was just mind-boggling for me. But this is actually the second or third time I've recorded this video. Um... The reason for that is I had to really sleep on this game because when I first saw the screenshots of it before I saw the full trailer, I recorded a video on it because I wasn't really too keen on how the game looked. And then I saw it in action. A lot of my um, fears about the game and concerns were, were squashed a little bit. But there are a few things that, you know, concerned me a little bit here. But before we discuss that, let's talk about, you know, what this game seems to be doing differently or what um, it seems to be doing new for the Story of Seasons series. Well, I guess it's really not doing new, but what it's bringing back from older games. Um, this game seems to be, in my opinion, looking like a continuation of Harvest Moon A New Beginning. And for those of you who don't know about Harvest Moon A New Beginning, that was the Story of Seasons game in which you had complete control over how your farm looked and how the town was set up. The entire game was just built around your customization of it. And due to that, it was a really good Story of Seasons game, it's one of my favorites, but because of that um, fact with it, the game came off looking very sterile and very bland because it had to be that way in order to give players the best option to make the most out of it. And that was the initial feeling I got with Pioneers of Olive Town. This game gave me that same sterile vibe of a new beginning. But to the game's credit, it's also due to the same reason. It seems like this, your entire farm will be able to be customized. And from what I'm also reading, the ta um, Olive Town itself may be customizable or you may be able to build that up from the ground up as well. And there may be an entire city for you to explore as well. I'm not entirely sure on the details of this game because I was only going off mostly on the trailer and a few different details from the website and my Japanese is not the greatest. So maybe once we find out more, I'll make a follow-up video discussing more about that. But it does seem like we'll be able to have complete control on building our farm and the community around it and maybe a town to go see. And this sounds very similar to, I believe... Harvest Moon on the Game Boy Color, where you had a city to go to and your farm to run. I could be mistaken, but it was one of those older ones, and to see that actually come back, if this is indeed the case, is actually pretty exciting. But yeah, that's where my initial skepticism of the game came into, is that the game, in my opinion, on first glance, looked to be very, you know, too clean and, I guess, uninspired. But now, I guess, looking on it, it does make sense considering what the game may be trying to do. In terms of the game's art style, it does look very reminiscent of the Wii Harvest Moon games, and I believe the one on the Vita, um, Hero of Leaf Valley, or the name of that one, I have not actually played that one, but I remember seeing it in action a lot, and this game gives me the same vibes of those um, selection of games, so I'm not one of those people who are too hard on the art style with it. I will admit, at first glance, I thought, oh my goodness, this, is like, this looks like a Natsume uh, Harvest Moon game if it had an actual budget. Um, but then I realized, okay, wait, I'm being hyperbolic. It's looking a lot like some of the older games in terms of their style, and I'm I'm a-okay with this. Um, I do like a lot of the new character designs and different um, people that you'll be make, um, make, um, making friends with, and the potential bachelorettes. There are a few of them that caught my eye right away that I find downright adorable, and I believe as of recording this, we only know half of the bachelors and bachelorettes, so there will be um, more of them to talk to. Um, another big thing I saw about this game was that there will be t over 200 different events of people around town. Now, I am one who loves the character interactions and the writing in the Story of Seasons games. I believe they're really fun, they bring a lot of depth to the city you live in, and add a lot more um, uh, motivation for you to want to make different things in your farm and give them to people. With this game having over 200 events, I don't think any other Story of Seasons game has had this many events in it. Now, I don't know what kind of events these are going to be. Um, 
I know that, you know, we'll have our standard, you know, hard events. Maybe there'll be more like dating events and marriage events and family events. Um, but over 200, that just seems to be a bit mind-boggling because I'm pretty sure uh, most of the mainline games have, you know, half that when you um, when you get down to it. So to see it, you know, see, to see Marvel is focusing a lot more on character interactions is really um, going a long way for me. Because as far as I'm concerned, Marvelous has more or less perfected the Bokujo farming formula. Um, I don't know how much they can improve on it. I mean, well, I guess we can talk about this now. Um, they have seemed to be improving on it by the looks on the, uh, the gameplay. We will be having the ability to make sprinklers for the farm to be able to um, water our crops for us. So huzzah! No longer having to upgrade my watering can all the way. Well, maybe I still have to, but sprinklers look to be very promising and there may be an assortment of other tools that we'll be able to use on the farm as well. So that's also really cool. And another interesting thing I thought was adorable was that you can actually go out into the wild area and recruit your, uh, your animals to live on the farm. Now, I don't know if that's the only way to get animals to live on your farm, or if you have to, or if there will be a way to go out to a store and buy them. But, you know, it's a nice little way to um, add variety to how you want to get animals, because there could be um, a dif differentiate difference between um, a, a animal you buy, on, um, buy at a ranch and an animal you just pick up uh, out of the wild. One of them, you know, the, the wild animals could produce better um, quality um, products, and they could give, you know, um, healthier offsprings and so forth. So... It'll be really interesting to see how they mix and match the the livestock in the game, similar to how they did in the Friends of Mineral Town remake, where you had to rely on generational farming of your animals, constantly um, having to give children to make better quality produce. So that may be it. May seem like they may be um, focusing a lot on what they incorporated in Friends of Mineral Town and bringing it into this game. And on that note, I have started to realize the more I look into this game that yeah. This game is definitely building off of what they started in the Friends of Mineral Town remake, and I'm guessing this is going to be the way they're going to be taking the series in the future. Um, I was hoping the series would kind of go in a different route. I was hoping it would go, it would try to progress what it started in Trio of Towns and go beyond with that, but, you know, I guess they, they want to take a different direction with it, and there could be good reason for that. As far as I'm aware, I could be wrong on this, I do not believe Hakama and Hashimoto are working on this game. I believe they are, you know, all hands on deck on Rune Factory 5. So it seems like for now, this game is being made by the people who made the Friends of Mineral Town remake, which is, you know, pretty interesting. Uh, I don't know if this means that Hakama and Hashimoto are pretty much done with the, with the story of season series, or if it's just because he's working on Rune Factory 5 and he's not working on any more in the future. Um, I really do hope it works that he does another one in the future, because I do like the story of Season of Games that he's made. But, you know, I'm willing to give this game a try with the new team and everything like that. So, yeah. Um, I've gone from a bit pessimistic to this game to being cautiously optimistic. I want to see more of this game in action. Um, I'll definitely be um, put out a review for this game. So, I'll definitely get a chance to get, get a good feel for it and let you all know my final thoughts on this game. But, yeah, those are my initial thoughts on Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town. Or... Story of Seasons Poot. It's an interesting name they chose. But yeah, I'd like to know your thoughts as well. Leave them down in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this game. Are you on the fence with it? Or are you cautiously optimistic? Or are you just downright excited for it? I would love to know. Also, if you don't know this already, I'm also streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash gamma pt. I'll have a link down to it down in the description below. I'll be streaming Rune Factory, probably some more Sakuna of Rice and Rune, and of course, any future Story of Seasons and Rune Factory titles as well. Um, I'm having a lot of fun on streaming on Twitch. But also, if you're new to my channel, find me for the first time for this video. Hey, be sure to subscribe for future reviews and commentaries, and well, it's my stream archives for sure. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.